What's up, meatbags? It's the often imitated, never duplicated Tony TGD coming at you with a little video. That's actually two videos. I decided to combine them because, you know, I'm going to give you double the pleasure, double the fun here. Now, we're going to be talking about tokenization, tokenism, whether or not Miles Morales himself is a token character. But we're also going to be talking about uh, where this idea came from, where the word tokenization came from. Because we're going to be discussing uh, Young Ripa, uh, Eric July. And, uh, you know, this was a, a, a rabbit hole, a rabbit hole, if you will, because I didn't plan on making this video about Young Ripa. I don't even know him. I, I've never watched his content until today when I watched this one particular video um, about tokenism. So like I said, I, I have no reference, no uh, hatred. I don't know who he is. I don't know what he does. I don't know who he hangs out with. I just know that this word, tokenization, it's kind of his word. It's kind of his thing. And now I, I came across this word because, you see, I was in the uh, comment section here of this Mad Max video. You know, the one that I talked about yesterday. Uh, we went to the comment section and there was a great comment by uh, Blinded Braille. He said... Let's see if we can get this bad boy up. Here it is. There's no offense, but this topic wasn't worth talking about. We kind of already know they aren't a fan of Miles because they think he's a token character. Purposeful said nothing about race, so people could tell them, call them all racist and bigots. At this point, we just fill in the blanks for their opinions when it comes to minor characters. Now, uh, I got into the comments, you know, just added some things. You know, Miles had four aliases in, in the past, you know, just adding stuff. But, uh... This man here, Dare D'Arrow, started talking about characters being tokens. And eventually, he started using this word, tokenization. Now, you might be surprised to know that the word tokenization does not mean what Mr. Dare D'Arrow is trying to use it as. You see, if we go over here to uh, Wikipedia, our good friends over at Wikipedia says, Tokenization is uh, data security. It's uh, the process of substituting a sensitive data element with non-sensitive equivalent, referred to as a token. Now, obviously, this has nothing to do with Miles Morales, comic book characters, race, uh, gender, creed being changed. Uh, none has nothing to do with any of that. So, this this couldn't be the right definition. Now, the only other definition. On Wikipedia is this one here, which says tokenization, lexical analysis. Uh, it says the process of demarcating and possibly classifying sections of a string of input characters. The resulting tokens are then passed on to some other form of processing. Now again, it's quite clear that D. Uh, Dare Diero, he wasn't talking about you know some sort of data strings, some sort of processes on the computers. So, so what was he talking about? Where did this word come from? Who did he hear this word from? Well, when I went looking, when I went Googling, I came across this video here from uh, Young Rip of 59. It is, uh, what is tokenism? It says tokenism and tokenization explained. So there it is. Tokenization. It is a Young Ripa, an Eric July creation. But why? Why did he create this word? Well, Let's listen to his own words. Hopefully, you can hear them because, you know, my computer does have issues sometimes. But we're going to play it and, and I will repeat what he says because there's a huge lie right up front in this video. Comment section, just send them this video and call it a day. There wasn't even a Webster's Dictionary entry for tokenism when I first started using it in videos. All right, so if my computer screwed that up, if it didn't play correctly, you couldn't hear it. Uh, Young Ripa here says that there wasn't even a Webster's Dictionary entry for the word tokenism when he started using it. Now, this is a huge lie. This is what the whole video is predicated on, because uh, by him saying that there was no definition of tokenism, he's now being able to create his own definition of tokenism, and therefore uh, the definition for tokenization. So, uh, is it is it true? I'm saying it's a lie, but how, how can we prove this? There's got to be a way. There's got to be a way, folks. Some way to prove whether or not this is a true statement. Whether or not Webster's Dictionary 
had a definition for tokenism when uh, Young Rippa started using it. Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at Young Rippa's videos here. And I did the helpful uh, little search for the word tokenism among his videos. And the oldest entries uh, that came up were only two years old. We'll say three. We'll, 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 you know, we'll round it up to three years. Three years ago, Eric July started using the word tokenism in videos. Tokenization. Now, if we look at his older videos, which are just coming up because, again, YouTube's slow, you see that he didn't really start talking about stuff. He had uh, Eric July running the 100 meter dash, he's doing some rapping, he's talking to people. Uh, another uh, race, it looks like, eight seconds. A four minute video of him rapping. He really doesn't get into his groove of, you know, talking to the camera and, and making these kind of videos until until later. Later in his career. I mean, we're going to keep going. We'll say here. Uh, we started doing vlogs. We'll say five years ago. Five years ago, Eric July started doing vlogs. And let's say that he didn't use tokenism, tokenization in the title of the video. So it didn't come up in my little search. But we'll say that, uh, we'll just assume that he used it in this video five years ago. Well, let's go on over to uh, merriamwebster.com, dictionary for tokenism. So there is an entry currently for tokenism in, in Merriam Webster's, and it is the policy or practice of making only a symbolic effort as to desegregate examples of tokenism in a sentence. Did the company choose her for her merits or merely as an act of tokenism? Now, the good thing about, you know, being online is they have comment sections. And as soon as it loads up, because, man, my computer is just that slow. We're going to take a look at the comments on this uh, Merriam-Webster thing here. Now, as you can see, GG Torin here. On uh, April 26th of 2011, that would be over 10 years ago, made a comment on this this page here. That means this page, this Merriam-Webster entry, was at least 10 years old. That means that there was a Merriam-Webster dictionary definition of the word tokenism at least six years six to five years before Eric July started doing his uh, his vlogs. Now, you might be saying, well, let, let's suppose, how old is, is Eric July? So we're going to go to, to IMDB here. So we're really going to get into the mud because, you know, I really got to settle this issue. It says he was born on April 17th, 1990. So he's about 31 years old. So in 1990, let's, let's assume that Eric July's first word, right out the womb, you know, he got spanked by the doctor. His first word was tokenism. He was using that word since the day he was born. April 17, 1990. Well, if we look once again at our Merriam-Webster dictionary here, it says the First known use of tokenism is from 1960. Now, I do know that a very famous man, very, very famous man, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., he used the word tokenism in one of his books. Now, I would assume that if he was using the word tokenism in a book, it probably had a definition. So we could assume that at least from the mid to late 70s you know we'll say that it took years after the book was written but at least from the mid to late 70s tokenism was in the dictionary was in the webster dictionary so the whole video the whole premise of this video that there was no tokenism in the dictionary in the webster's dictionary when uh young Rippa started his uh YouTube career, his 
video analysis of pop culture is a lie. It's a complete lie. It's an utter lie. Which means that any definition he gives that is not the Merriam-Webster's dictionary definition is completely false. And I, I know that he says here, uh, he put a disclaimer, he says, I, Eric July, do not care what you personally think that I that it, tokenism, is or that you think I should use a different term. Well, it's not about what I think it is, Mr. Eric July. It's about what Merriam's Webster's Dictionary thinks it is. And again, if we look at the definition, it is the policy or practice of making only a symbolic effort as to desegregate. Now, if, if you need me to break this down further, this would mean creating a character who is unimportant, a background character, um, changing somebody, uh, their race, their gender, and then uh, leaving them in the background, leaving them as a disposable character, that could be considered tokenism. Creating a brand new character and giving him or her her own comic book would not be tokenism because they would be an important character. They would be somebody that the company is trying to promote and have people read and, and sell comics based on that character. Now, Miles Morales was not a background character. Miles Morales is not um, some one-off character that they just created to generate buzz and then never did anything again with him. No, Miles Morales is a pretty important character. He's a pretty popular character and is a pretty uh, meaningful character in the comics. So, Miles Morales would not be a token. By no stretch of the definition would Miles Morales be a token. Now, going back to uh, Dare D. Arrow here. He says, uh, making a black Peter Parker, a historically white character, they effectively tokenized him. Now, uh, this is 100% incorrect because there is no black Peter Parker. Miles Morales is not a black Peter Parker. Miles Morales is a black Miles Morales. Peter Parker is a white Peter Parker. Uh, they did not uh, gender swap. They did not race swap Peter Parker. They simply created a new character. And I know uh, many people will say, well, they created Miles Morales specifically to replace Peter Parker. Well, that's not correct. You see, Miles Morales was created after the idea of killing off Peter Parker and the Ultimate line was uh, established. See, during Ultimatum, which would be the Ultimates, uh, it was going to be the big finale where they were going to end the, end the series. Uh, during that, they decided, you know, what would be really, really shocking would be if we killed off Peter Parker. So the plan was that they were going to kill off Peter Parker during Ultimatum. But then they backed out. They said, no, we're not going to do that. However, a couple months later, they said, you know what? We, we will. We're going to kill off Peter Parker. And at that point, they said, now we need to create a character to replace Peter Parker. And that is where Miles Morales' creation came from. Out of necessity. Not out of the need to replace, but out of necessity to uh, fill a hole a gap in the lineup as it were so again this would not be tokenization tokenism and this would not be uh, a race swap now if you want a race swap if you want to talk about a character that was race swapped you would talk about somebody like uh, Hemdel now Hemdel in the Thor movies is obviously a uh, play by Idris Elba a black individual whereas Hemdel in the comics is a white individual now, we could get into the semantics and say that technically the Asgardians are not white because they're aliens who are like, um, you know, demigod-type beings. So technically they're not Caucasian. But to simplify things, we'll just say that they're Caucasian. You know, they're they're white. And Hemdel being played by Idris Elba would be a race swap. Now, as far as a gender swap, which is... Another complaint here by Mr. Uh, Dar D. Arrow, because he was talking about She-Hulk. Uh, says that She-Hulk is token of that. 
tokenized. And here it is right here. Uh, she's literally a female Hulk. They gender swapped the Hulk. Well, no, they, they didn't gender swap the Hulk. Again, uh, this is a, an individual who is uneducated, ignorant of the terminology he's using. Uh, to gender swap somebody would be to take a character and literally change the gender of the character. Uh, thereby making the original character non-existent in a new character who is the old character in a new body uh, the new normal now uh, if you want a gender swap example then you would go to uh, the Eternals movie where in the comic books Makari is a male but in the Eternals movie Makari is a female it is the same character the same powers, the same backstory, the same motivations, except for the gender has been swapped. Hence the term gender swap. She-Hulk is not a gender swap because She-Hulk is a different character. She is Bruce Banner's cousin, Betty. Uh, not Betty, what the hell is her name? Jennifer, Jennifer Walters. Damn, uh, Betty's his uh, girlfriend. And Jennifer Walters is a separate character from Bruce Banner. It is Bruce Banner's cousin. She gets a uh, blood transfusion from Bruce, and that turns her into the She-Hulk. It is a different origin story. It is a character related to the original, but it is not a gender swap. The Hulk does not disappear and turn into the She-Hulk. That would be a gender swap, but that's not what happens. It is a new character. And again, she's not a token because she's not a throwaway character she's not a minor character a background character she had her own comic book she's a pretty important character in the grand scheme of marvel comics and uh, uh, another reason why she wouldn't be a token or a tokenize tokenization or whatever other uh, fancy version of token you want to say is because of the reason behind her creation now, obviously, what Dar Diero and Eric July are getting at is is really the reasons for the characters being created, the motivation behind the creation. You know, they believe that these characters are being created as uh, female version stand-ins to replace or to supersede the original versions. Now, if you know anything, if you are a nerd extraordinaire like me if you are a true geek and comic book fan you'll know that the she-hulk was not created to replace the incredible hulk she was not created in order to uh create a female who the kids could look up to she was actually created as a way to hold the copyright for the word she-hulk you see uh, the hulk had a successful tv show you might have watched it you know uh, Bill Bixby, you know, Lou Ferrigno, very popular for the time. Now, Marvel Comics was was afraid that another network might create a female version of their characters and put on TV shows. So in order to stop that from happening, they created female versions of their characters. That's why the She-Hulk and Spider-Woman were created. They were created specifically to block any other networks from attempting to create female versions of their characters and create TV shows around them. So their motivation was monetary, selfishness, um, but it had nothing to do with a replacement of the male characters or to push the male characters into the background and make the female characters more prominent. It was simply a matter of copyright protection, as I said in the comments here. Now, here's where we really get to the heart of the matter. See, token, according to Dardiero, in simple terms, adding a minority in the mix of the majority. So, according to this man, any character that is a non-majority character, meaning a non-white male character, is now a token. Regardless of the fact that um, Miles Morales is not the first black character in comics, he's not... One of the first, he's not probably even like the 50th black character in Marvel Comics. No, just being non-white, non-majority, according to this man, makes him a token. And that is completely incorrect. You see, 
the whole idea of a token character would be somebody, like I said, created for an agenda, created to virtue signal how progressive, how diverse uh, their characters are. Miles Morales is not that. Miles Morales was created as a celebration of the African American experience and the uh, Hispanic experience because he is uh, part Hispanic, part black. He was created as a new character, someone that the children can look up to, someone that they could promote and uh, make a lot of money off of. Now, they did not race swap Peter Parker. Peter Parker did not wake up one day and become Miles Morales. He uh, did not disappear in order for Miles Morales to take his spotlight. In fact, Peter Parker, who died so that Miles could live, actually came back to life. See, if, again, if you read the comics, if you know what's going on in the comics, Peter Parker, who was dead, returned to life because you see the Oz formula, the formula that gives both Peter Parker, the Green Goblin, and Miles Morales their powers, has a little side effect where the Green Goblin says... That makes them immortal. So Peter Parker's alive. He didn't die. Well, he did die, but he came back. Just can't stay dead, I guess. So technically, you know, he's still out there. He's still able to become Spider-Man. However, he passed that mantle off to Miles Morales, saying, you know, he can't put Aunt May through that. He can't just suddenly show back up and, you know, be alive. Uh... That would be too much of a burden for Aunt May to handle. You know, I haven't been doing YouTube that long. I haven't been making videos. I haven't been uh, getting out in the mud with these people. But maybe I should. Because it seems like a lot of these uh, YouTube commentators, YouTube talking heads, they like to lie. They like to twist facts. They like to say things that are completely... And utterly untrue and easily provable to be untrue. But they, their fans, their associates, uh, they seem to turn a blind eye. They seem to prefer a narrative spin over a factual discussion. Now I have no problem with discussing forced diversity, uh, tokenization, tokens... You know, I am not a uh, SJW, a lefty. I try not to be political, but I'm just saying. I'm the farthest from the type of person that you would think would uh, be defending Miles Morales. But here I am. Because uh, what I defend is truth, honesty, and uh, accurate information. And with that said, I'm going to end this video. And hopefully you've learned a little. Hopefully you realize that certain individuals just can't be trusted. Just